go into your working folder and pick up a document we've used before in this chapter. And it's 609 underscore 340 dot Go ahead and open that one up if you want to follow along. What we're going to do in this lesson is gain, in my opinion, absolute control over an adjustment layer by using the adjustment layer mask. I love masks. Masks tell the adjustment what areas to apply it to, what areas not to apply it to, and what areas of the image to maybe just give it a little bit of the adjustment. Let's do this. I am in the Essentials Workspace, and I'm going to move my Layers panel over here. Now, since we've been doing that for all of these lessons, yours might already be over here, and that's fine. Let's start out by adding an adjustment. Doesn't matter. Anyone will do. I'm going to go back to black and white. I like that one. Now, remember, this is not about the specific adjustment. It's about the mask. So choose anything you want. I'm going to go in here and change that maybe to lighter. You say, well, yeah, I like that. So I'm going to click here and collapse that for a minute. Now, we have a mask, and the mask is built into the adjustment layer. The mask controls where the adjustment is applied based on painting it with black, white, or shades of gray. If you paint with black, you're saying, don't adjust that area, bring it back. If you paint with white, see it's all white right now, give the image the entire adjustment if, now this is cool, if you paint with shades of gray, the percentage of gray determines the percentage of the adjustment. So if I go into my paintbrush tool right here, and down here, if I click that little bent arrow, I can reverse my colors and get black on top. That's my painting color. Or you can press the letter X on your keyboard. Don't forget that one. If I come over here and begin painting, I think you probably do know this, is that any area that I paint with black means don't adjust that area. Now, if I reverse my color with the letter X and then begin painting over it again with white, it comes back or the adjustment comes back. These are absolute control over the image. So let's have a little bit of fun here. Let's go over to this one right here. Now, this is a selection technique. We haven't really formally got into selection yet, so forgive me, but we're going to use quick selection right here. Now, this tool, really neat, all you do is you click and you drag with it. That's all you have to do. You drag with it, and it will attempt to find areas and stop at edges. If we come over here with this tool, I've got kind of a small brush. What I'll do is I'll click and then just begin dragging. Isn't that cool? I mean, if you use a really small brush, it's going to take you a little bit more dragging, but in the end, you'll probably have something more accurate. You can see I'm just trying to get those edges. If I get too much, we'll handle that too. Come all the way down here. Go up this side. Look at that. I just love this tool. Now, we do have one area, and that's this area that shouldn't be selected. So with the same tool selected, hold down the Alt key, and that's the Alt key in Windows and the Option key on a Mac. And then click in this area, and it will begin taking that area away. Now, if we get too much, it looks like we're going to. See right in here? Come back. Take your finger off the Alt or the Option key, and come back again and try to get that area by drawing it in. That's close enough. That's amazing. <laughs> that is a cool selection tool. Now, the next thing, I want to fill that area with black. Now, black means don't adjust. So what I'm looking for here is to create an image where the background's in gray and he is in color. That's the whole goal, and the mask will do that for me. Now, how do we fill that area? Well, number one, I'm going to press the letter X, which will put my foreground color on top. Now, if you remember the shortcut, the shortcut for filling an area, a selection, or an entire layer with the current foreground color, different on Mac or Windows, is Windows, hold down the Alt key and press Backspace. On Mac, hold down the Option key and press Delete. Now I'm also going to press Control D for deselect, and that's Command D on a Mac, Control D in Windows, so we can see the actual image. The mask is controlling that area, but we're not done. If we come back over here and double click on this button right here, we get our options back over here. So what we're going to do next is let's select the mask. And as you can see over here, the properties now change for the mask. Now, one of those is what's called density. Density is actually like the transparency of the mask. And if we lower that, what we're going to wind up doing is restoring the adjustment by lowering the color. If you want to do that, that's cool. 
Let me take that back. The next one is feathering. And feathering allows me to soften the edges. If I go really far here, you can see how it's beginning to bleed out into those areas because the mask is softer. Let's take that back. The best way to control this is right here with mask edge. Now, if we go in here, let me move that so we can see, what you're looking at now is the mask. That's what was made with that selection. We can now control it. Now, we'll get more into refined mask when we get into selection. And we're not going to get into edge detection because we've already got the edge. But down here, we can smooth it a little bit. Kind of smooth out those edges, which looks pretty good. We can feather it here, too, if you want to. But I don't think we need a lot. Maybe just a little. Add some contrast to the edge. And even shift the edge if we want to. Now, I think the edge was where it was supposed to be. So I'm going to type the number 0 in here because I can never get the number that I want. And our output needs to be back to the layer mask. And we click OK, and it'll think about it, and it refined the edge. Now, another option that we have is to invert it. So maybe you want everything else in color and him in grayscale, or click that button again. You can check here for color range. We'll get more into color range later. But basically, it allows me to make a selection based on sampling colors in an image, which is usually not that successful in something like this anyway. I'm going to cancel out of that. We made our selection using this button over here. Let's go ahead and close that out right here so we can see our image again. Using the mask controlled exactly the area in the image that the adjustment was applied and the areas that it wasn't applied. And it gives you total control over working with these adjustment layers.